be part of a cooperative society because they are the voices of our farmers. Now continuing with our conversation with Mr. John Eric, who is a technical project manager at Lattice Aquaculture. We were talking about have we neglected fishing in Lake Trukana to a point where we can scare to fishing. Am I any conversations to do with what we can do to improve the blue economy? All eyes run to Lake Victoria and to the Nyanza region. Why is there such a big gap if you compare them to the other regions? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's a very, very important question, Gina, because one thing that most people do not know is that the size of Lake Turkana is almost twice the size of Lake Victoria in Kenya. So people know Lake Victoria is a big fishery, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. But then if looking at the resources we have in the country, Lake Turkana is actually bigger than Lake Victoria, the portion that we have in the country. Mm -hmm. Now, the biggest challenge has been the remoteness of the lake. Until the, the, the road that goes through Lord from Kitale was made, it was very, very difficult to get to uh, uh, Lake Turkana. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we have an airport in Lodwa, so it's just starting to open up. Mm -hmm. On average, you need 60% less, less time than you would have required a couple of years ago to the, get to the lake. Mm -hmm. And looking at all the great lakes uh, in the region, Lake Turkana being uh, the fourth largest in Africa, it's the least studied. So it's uh, something that's opening up and it's going to change with time. Mm -hmm. Just like we have uh, tilapia and Nile perch being the dominant species in Lake Victoria, it's the same way we have the two being dominant in Lake Turkana. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's just hope. Uh, for lack of a better word, uh -huh. because as the infrastructure comes up, now for example, if you saw the feature, most of the fish uh, fishermen use low tech uh, equipment, so most of them still use uh, rafts, some even do not have motorized boats. So, what uh, then happens is that their fishing activity is limited close to the shoreline. Now what happens is you can't catch the big fish close to the shoreline and this is not even sustainable because the fish you find close to the shoreline are the small fish because these are breeding zones. But then with uh, all this empowerment going on and the region opening up and the market which is very important, if there is uh, the solution that comes with the cooling systems then we are going to encourage more people to get uh, better boats uh, to fish all right. Now you've mentioned something important on the fact that the infrastructure is opening up slowly. Now we have at least a flight a day going to Turkana. Yeah. So there's hope in the space of fishing. But now we also have that what we are calling water levels, which affect fishing in Lake Turkana. So we've yeah. had an increase over the last couple of years because of an increase in water level, but that keeps fluctuating. Yeah. Please help us understand the science behind it, what we mean when we're talking about a low water level and what that means to our fishermen there and the production of the fish as well. Yeah, so what happens is uh, Lake Victoria gets 90% of its waters from River Omo, which is uh, fresh water, of course. Uh -huh. And then uh, we don't have much control on uh, River Omo. It's all the way in, in Ethiopia. Uh -huh. Most of Lake Turkana is in Marsa Beach and Turkana, just a small portion in Samburu and a bit of it in Ethiopia. So what happens with this water influx and the last uh, couple of years we have uh, uh, electricity being generated along River Omo on the Ethiopian side. This affects how much water comes to the lake. We have uh, flooding in the river occasionally. This happens every couple of years. That also uh, impacts on the fluctuation of the uh, lake level. Mm -hmm. Now when we have this fluctuation it affects uh, very basic issues such as salinity in the lake. When we have salinity the whole ecosystem is uh, disrupted mm -hmm. and the fish have to re-strategize just like we do as humans. Mm -hmm. So you realize different uh, seasons based on what's happening with the inflows in the lake mm -hmm. and the climatic conditions we have different catch volumes uh, by the fish fishermen. All right. Okay. Yeah. Amezungumzia swala la science lakini kuna science tofauti hapa mara nyingi utapata kwamba tuyanyu yale maji kutoka Lake Turkana lakini tunakula samaki <laughs> uh, ile science inajitokezaje yeah. bingwa so uh, 
we haven't adapted to to drink the, the salty water mm -hmm. so uh, just to give context uh, the indian ocean is three percent salinity lake turkana is one percent so that's already two too salty for us to drink mm -hmm. but if you look at the fish uh, in the lake they've adapted to this environment so they are able to survive in the in the lake but then we still can't drink uh, the water from Lake Turkana mm -hmm. yeah how best can we increase the awareness and consumption of fish in Lake Turkana so that even as we are pushing for this infrastructure we are pushing for a more streamlined sector for the yeah. fishermen there they're also a guaranteed a ready market yeah. from within because that's also not balancing in our spreadsheet <laughs> as of now because these people don't consider they're even learning how to take vegetables now yeah so how what more work do we need to do to make sure there's a market there even so the, the consumption of fish around Lake Victoria like I said in my earlier point it's happening in a very organic way because it's now a need uh, these people having to rely on Lake Turkana based on what's happening with the livestock but then the market is still very important because we need to increase the value of the fish itself uh, for the fish to be available for people to consume it it has to be caught now for us to go catch fish we need an incentive which is the market uh, mm -hmm. as you said mm -hmm. so we need to really uh, up the infrastructure especially with the cold chain solutions mm -hmm. because then increase the value of fish and uh, this incentive for someone to go catch fish we uh, haven't caught enough fish from like Turkana. So we look at the sustainable yield. That's what we usually use to gauge whether we are catching more than we should. Uh, the available data in, uh, indicates that we are still catching less than the sustainable yield. So that means that we can catch more fish from the lake. So we just need a proper infrastructure. All right. Yeah. Ile ile kitu ambacho ni kikubwa zaidi vile vile uone kwamba wale watu wanachoka kwa sababu thamani ya samaki katika Lake Victoria ipo juu ikilinganishwa na thamani ya samaki kule Lake Turkana kuwapatia moyo na msisimko wa kuendelea tufanyeje? Ah uh, mtasisitiza uh, tu Kenya nimesema kuhusu uh, cold chain uh, solutions about the value of the fish so as the region is opening up you see more fish from the lake being sold in ethiopia sudan uganda and very interestingly in drc because in drc there's a very big market for dried salted fish mm -hmm. and that's what as the fisherman was saying they do most so for us to increase the value we have to ensure that the fishermen can sell more of their fish uh, fresh rather than dried and salted mm -hmm. because then the value is higher All right mm -hmm. now also we have the concern of we generate a lot of fish waste yeah. yearly about 150,000 tons but we are only recycling 30,000 tons of it so yeah. about 120,000 tons of fish waste makes its way back to the landfill and even the lakes and that has greater repercussions when you talk about climate change and even just the health of us as human beings yeah. as an expert in the fish space are there efforts being put in place to make sure that we are now recycling this waste better we are bringing people who are in the fertilizer space in the you know fish they're using fish bones to make fertilizer we are connecting them to where this fish bones are coming from those yeah. who are making ornaments we're also connecting them so that we have like a circular engagement between key players who are not in the fish sector but they could really make good use of this waste are we almost there i won't say we're almost there but okay. we are on the right track mm -hmm. uh the th this this we have to look at it holistically because then it's not just confined to aquaculture or fisheries alone we are looking at policies around uh, waste collection and uh, and all that mm -hmm. so we have people on the other hand so we have very creative people already who are already making products from uh, uh, fish skin fish uh, bones we have people making shoes and things like that mm -hmm. but then uh, for us to scale these efforts we need uh, policies that support this mm -hmm. we have people producing bsf for, ex uh, for example this right. is the black soldier fly mm -hmm. Uh, they'll tell you that their biggest uh, disadvantage or the biggest challenge they face is waste but then on the other hand we have 
we claim we have a lot of waste in the society and the environment is not so clean. Mm -hmm. So we look at how can these two converge, right. the need and uh, uh -huh. the supply. So the policies are not yet there, but the conversations are Some somewhere happening. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, napenda sana namna wewe unatiririka maarifa kuhusiana na masuala ya Turkana na inafurahisha kweli kweli lakini hili tu kwa haraka tilapia wa Turkana mtamu sana sio <laughs> kulinganisha na Black Victoria ngino ulikula tilapia wa Turkana I did <laughs> what was the experience <laughs> no, <laughs> Bella, no Bella, the Bella, truth of the Bella. matter is I've eaten so much fish <laughs> <in> <laughs> I don't know there's just no. something about so, uh, so the, the answer to this takes us back to our kitchens mm. and what do we use salt for in our kitchens which is a lot of us yeah so uh, already kona lava the fresh water so, so, so. Yeah. all right <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> great now we have come to the end of our gold conversation thank you so very much john eric for being very generous with your time and teaching us a lot more when it comes to fishing in electrocana but before we put a full stop to it na tuanguke now na wakulima kule electrocana our question of the day was what key cannot open what kind of a key can't open doors we will be sampling some of the answers from the viewers but john eric what is your answer what kind of a key can't open doors low hanging fruit samaki <laughs> samaki okay now how donkey donkey mm. oh man <laughs> let us look at some of the answers from our viewers remember it has to be something that you get in your farm j4 underscore r3 door ng4 says keyboard do you plant keyboards <laughs> no in your farm there's a keyboard yeah. <laughs> from mamake underscore ted tatiana says education hey when <laughs> <laughs> and then from it's underscore timaish they say the kiwi fruit i see what you did there mm -hmm. another one from raymond underscore joroge they say keyboard key this you cannot get in your farm so we disqualify you another one from toria underscore g they say pumpkin that's creative i like it <laughs> and another one from miss sunshine 541 they say key holder well remember the answer has to be something that you find in your farm so the answer of our farm joke of the day is a turkey or a donkey and terrell got it right you know ah mombasa did you well look at you winning Yo. <laughs> Tumashukuru sana Jonary kwa nafasi yako kuja siku ya leo. Asante kila wakati kwa kujitokeza kwa mtazamaji. Nashukuru sana kwa sababu umetufuatilia ni Semeji Sansa Selena Mwenyezi Mungu kukumbuka tatimiza ndoto. Jina langu ni Emmanuel Eterer. And I think Jonary you're right. If you say samaki but samak and then K E Y samaki